Good afternoon. The time is 2 o'clock. Welcome to Vox Pop on this fine food Friday, June 12th. I'm Ray Graff. It's Adventures in Radio today. On the line to talk Polish foods with us are Jane Kazmarek, Polish-American award-winning actress, and Beata Pochniak, who is an award-winning Polish-born actress and director. Yeah, they're here to talk Polish food. You got a question about Polish recipes, Polish traditions? Maybe you want to share a family recipe? Give us a call for Pete's sake, 800-348-2551, 1-800-348-2551. Jane Kazmarek and Bayata Pochniak, Polish Foods, your call's coming up on Vox Pop right after the news. Hello once again. Welcome back to Vox Pop, WAMC's live afternoon call-in talk show. I'm Ray Graff. Today it's Food Friday, and, you know, every year around this time, we talk Polish foods, and we get ready for Polish Fest, which is a little different this year, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. We welcome two very talented actresses today. Jane Kazmarek is a Polish-American award-winning actress best known for her role on Malcolm in the Middle, regular guest host of Selected Shorts, no stranger to the round table, and her cucumber salad, her Polish cucumber salad, it's the stuff of legend, trust me on this. Uh, Beata Pozniak is a Polish-born award-winning actress and director who recently won the Ear Buds Award for her reading of the Pulitzer Prize-winning novel Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tukarczyk. And um, I tell you what, this person is in a video game, and that's very exciting as well. Jane and Beata, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. It is so nice to be back there um, in Northwest. Well, I have a home in Northwest Connecticut uh, since 1985, and I'm usually there in the summer. Um, but this year, uh, lots of lots of stuff going on, huh? So I'm calling, talking to you from Pasadena, California, as opposed to my home in Connecticut. Oh my God, you're up early. That's great. Good for you. <laughs> and Be- Beata, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you so much for having me. What a pleasure. Where are you calling from? I am calling from Los Angeles. Okay, so you're both out west, and uh, we're here out east. It's a beautiful day out here. And, uh, you know, as I said at the outset of the program, oh, by the way, let me give the number, 800-348-2551. We will schmooze some uh, Polish foods coming up, 800-348-2551. As I said at the beginning, you know, Antoinette Alberti uh, comes on every year. And she brings some Polish food and some beers. We have a couple of pops. We talk about the Polish Fest. It's a little different this year. And so she said, you know what? We're doing a virtual Polish Fest this year, and so we're going to bring some big names in for the show. And I got to tell you, I'm petrified. I hope I can handle this. <laughs> you know. I, can, I can assure you, being ra- were you raised Catholic, Bieta? Um, you know, in Poland, uh, yeah. everybody is Catholic. Everybody in my Catholic. days, you know, yes. the, the church uh, played a really important part yes. since I grew up behind the Iron Curtain during the communist times. So the church really helped us out in terms of food and getting the right information, what, what is happening in the country, because in those days it was Radio Free Europe. Yeah. And so that was we would rely on, on, on the church to really tell us what's happening outside of Poland. Well, Ray, see, for that reason, you're talking to two nice Catholic ladies, and we will be very nice to you. I <laughs> married a Polish-American Catholic lady, too, so I, I'm— Because you have your head screwed on straight. Well, you know what? You ask her, you may not get that answer, but I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> uh, you know, before we get to the phones, and they're loading up already at 800-348-2551, Jane, the, the whole concept— of duck blood soup is both terrifying and delicious. Explain. Um, also known as charnina, um, it is a soup made from the blood of ducks. And I remember ducks hanging in my grandmother's basement with their throat slit bleeding out into bowls. And this delicious concoction was, uh, it was very fruity. Raisins, apricots, um, I think some noodles. <laughs> it was fruity and it was delicious. The trick to it, of course, was that you could not tell anybody what it was before you got them to eat it. Oh my gosh. And so, but if, if you didn't tell people, they were like, oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. 
In fact, there's a funny story with that. My, um, I went to the University of Wisconsin, and my dear friend Marcy Freeman was working after, uh, at uh, the Better Business Bureau in Milwaukee, and there was an irate Polish woman who called because she bought a duck to make Janina, and the blood was gone. Oh. And the grocer said, you have to buy the, the blood separately. And she said, no, the blood belongs to the duck. If I buy the duck, I should be getting the blood. And Marcy, who wasn't Polish, <laughs> just listening to this woman from the better, through the Better Business Bureau thinking, I have no idea how to counsel you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, Beata, you, you ever make the blood soup uh, over at the house when you were growing up? Uh, you know, Ternina was a very popular soup. Uh, Chernina comes from word black because it was actually dark, dark blood. Yeah. And it can be also made out of geese. You know, geese are very popular in Poland as well. People, that's another alternative to chicken. So pe- ge- people would eat geese and also make Chernina uh, from ducks or from geese. And you liked it too? You know, um, if it was interesting, let, let's put it this way. I'm glad, you know, nobody would t- say out loud what it's made from. But when you taste it, uh, you know, you go, wow, this is actually delicious. Oh my but gosh. once you find out, you kind of, may, you know, you go, how is it possible? <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, you, people can add celery root or cherry juice, parsnip, even dried apples uh, and that really makes it very tasty. You know, uh, on this program, we've been doing this program for years, and usually people come in, chefs come in, and they bring food, and we eat food. This is one time I'm really glad it's kind of a, a <laughs> virtual program. Well, but you know, Ray, it's such a testament, testament to um, the hardworking, uh, thrifty Polish people and all immig- and any uh uh, country that had, uh, you know, farm workers and people who were really t- trying to make ends meet, that nothing was wasted. When you, when you ate the duck, you made soup out of the blood. I mean, sausage is famous for that, that what goes into the sausage is all the leftover stuff um, for making all the other things. Yeah. And mm. so, so many of these dishes are the result of um, uh, using everything on the pig, except the oink, as they say. Um, yeah. You know, to keep people fed and uh, able to continue working hard, which is kind of the legacy of Polish people. Yeah, and I think of, of working people anywhere, and we, we've gotten away from that in the last 50, 100 years here in this country. But in a way, it's making a comeback. We have, we do a nose-to-tail programs here on Food Friday every now and again. We're joined today by Jane Kazmarek and also Beata Pozniak. It's Food Friday. We talk Polish foods today. And before we take our first break, uh, let's go over to line one and uh, w- welcome our buddy Antoinette Alberti. How you doing? Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm so excited that you have Jane and Beata there. This is great. So what do you think? Celebrity headliners for I'm, our own local Polish fest? I'm petrified. I don't know. What, what, what do you think? <laughs> I'm also frightened. <laughs> no, and, you know, I mean, I yelled at all those naughty children on, on um, uh, Malcolm in the Middle. But, yeah. uh, but Vieta, the book, the, uh, book she men- that you mentioned she read, you know, the author, Olga Tugarchuk, won the Nobel Prize in literature this year. So. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic to have Beata here um, with such credentials. You know, I'm kind of a hack from the Fox oh, Network. Oh, cut it out. But, um, this is lofty company, Beata. I'm really impressed to be on the air with you. Well, no, I mean, same here, Jane. I mean, uh, it's just so nice to be able to be also with someone that played uh, a mom. And also, I'm happy I can pronounce your name, Kaczmarek. <laughs> <laughs> there are 99 in the Milwaukee phone book. Uh, there were 100, but my Uncle Ray moved to Baltimore. You know, uh, uh, Antoinette, and, you know, go ahead. Thank you for, uh, for mentioning Ternina, <laughs> you know, and uh, I have to say um, – I am very surprised because not many people know about this uh, special soup. Uh, there's also reason, you know, people love the blood sausage, right? There's that also was blood another sausage. one I, I, I wrote about was the kishka. The kishka, that's correct. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we saw the that. kishka. Oh, yeah. Kishka, that's right. And I have to say, right, you mentioned um, a video game. 
I actually play the Blood Queen yes. on Mortal Kombat 11. And now I'm wondering, because the writers wrote, you know, the Blood Queen, a Scarlet, and they actually wrote in something about the blood sausage. So now, now you know, thanks to you, Jane, now I realize it's probably from the Polish cuisine. Ah, it's typecasting. Yeah, you Jacob, would you like to introduce uh, Kishka and how it's made or how uh, you grew up eating it or how it was served? Yeah, let's do do that. you remember Kishka? Yeah, I remember Kishka. Kishka. I'll tell you what, let's, well, let's take a quick break here, and oh, then okay. we will uh, talk foods, and we'll also talk to Antoinette about this virtual uh, Polish fest, which is kind of a new thing, and then we'll get into the recipes, and if they're as, half as exciting as the blood soup, we're in for one hell of a show. 800-348-2551. We'll be right back. You know, it's not often we have big stars on this program, but it's a call-in show. We'll give you the number. It's like a telethon. 800-348-2551. 1-800-348-2551. It's Food Friday, and we talk Polish food today with Beata Pozniak and also Jane Kazmarek. And with us also on the line, line one, is Antoinette Alberti, who runs the whole Polish fest. And, you know, how many years have you been coming, Antoinette? I've been coming to Food Friday. I think this is our fourth year, but we've been having Polish Fest for 18 years. Right, and we, we, we always have a great time. We, we, we chow down we a little a bit. Time. We have a few beers, you know, this and that. This year, it's completely different, and I wanted you to just quickly tell us about what's going on this year. Okay, very quickly. We're having the world's first virtual Polish Fest. It's going to be live streaming on the Polish Fest NY Facebook page starting from noon tomorrow till about five and picking up again on noon on Sunday and going again till about five. Um, Greg Archer, who's been on Food Friday before, he is a Polish American journalist. He's our MC and he's great. And we have other celebrities. I mean, this is this is the the craziest Polish fest in the world because <laughs> now we can have people from everywhere. So we have Duke basketball, Coach K, and we have Polka. And we have jazz, and we have Chopin, and strings, and contemporary music, and literature, and dance, and history, and culture. Just so much culture. But what about so, the food, you know, though? I mean, you know, you had a food sale, and, and there, there's so much that you can't, yeah. you can't do, right? There is so much we can't do, and I know you miss the food. I I'm so sorry. I um, but if I, I can butt in make, for a minute, I, I, you know, ahead. I'm... I'm I'm walking around with my you know my COVID fifteen instead of freshman fifteen that you gain fifteen pounds. I'm I'm packing on uh, 15, good fifteen pounds from being in quarantine all these months. Wow. So delicious Polish food might really <laughs> put you over the edge, <laughs> right? <laughs> But people can don't. There's a yeah. there's a button on the fest for donations and a silent auction and lots of ways for people to partic- participate. But there's one thing that I did yeah. see that uh, you're doing a food demo and also how to make spiced honey vodka. This piqued my interest. Yes, so I'm doing I'm doing two cooking demos. One for Saint Euphemia's Tears Nalewska, which is lemon and ginger and cardamom and honey. And then Krupnik, which is kind of a spiced honeyed vodka. Very lovely. And so I'll have to bring some of those to you this summer. Um, (laughs) And, you know, I just wanted to say that our Polish Fest food sale is sold out. Oh, you did have a food sale. We had a food sale. It sold out last night. But um, if people have a hankering for Polish food, the Polish Community Center is having an unaffiliated food sale tonight. And the Euro Deli in Latham and Musa and Troy both have excellent Polish takeout, even now during Corona. Oh, I'm just so excited. Thank you so much for having us again. And Jane and Beata, you guys are wonderful. Such stars. Thank you. Well, we're all part of the team here, Team Polska. You know, and- no, thank you so much, Antoinette, for putting it together. And although we are now in a very difficult times, you know, there's something positive that happened too. I think by by sharing this and on Facebook, um, you know, our Polish heritage and culture, literature, food can reach a bigger, wider audience. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, how do Thank I find you. this? Can I just? Yes. 
Oh, sorry. Antoinette, you go first. <laughs> I was I was going to say I wanted to give a sh- uh, one more shout out to um, Susan Gorga Matala, who um, I was I was a little depressed when we had to cancel <laughs> Polish Fest. She really rallied me and and helped me to figure out how to do it online. So I wanted to to say thank you. You know, Beata and Jane, you're right. We need to bring the festival to the people since the people can't come to the festival. Mm-hmm. It's PolishFestNY.org, yeah, right? PolishFest-NY.org? Yes. We can find a whole schedule right there. The whole schedule so, is right there. Although it's uh, 18 years, it's the very first virtual Polish fest. It's pretty exciting. Yes. But I got to tell you, it's exciting. It'll be fun, and then let's make a date right now, Antoinette. Next year, you'll be back here, and we'll eat a lot, right? <laughs> I promise. I right. promise. Well, <laughs> well and next year, I most likely will be back in my in back in Northwest Connecticut, and I would love to come up at Albany and see Joe Donahue and all the crazy cats, Alan Chartok, everybody yeah. at your station. All right, get a designated driver, though. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm going to get that in writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Angela, thanks for being here, and best of luck. Once again, it's the Facebook page for you guys is what? www.polishfest-ny.org. Let me know so, how it works out. What happens I sure if, will. Thank you. I don't, have, I don't have any social media. How would I find it? Wow. Oh. Um, uh, you would online. go to, okay, so, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it is online, and you do, you don't need to have a Facebook account to watch a Facebook feed. Oh, and good. Okay. So we'll put some directions on that um, on our website. Okay, good idea because I'm one of those who um, will need them. I love it. I love that. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for being here, Antoinette. Best of luck, and we will talk to you and find out how it worked out. The number here is eight hundred three four eight two five five one. 1-800-348-2551. It's Food Friday today, an interesting Food Friday with, uh, well, we have Beata Pozniak here and Jane Kazmarek here. We talk Polish food. And, Beata, you um, grew up on Beer Street, which I believe I also did. I well. did. Yeah. I was born and raised in Gdańsk um, on Piwna Street, which is Beer Street. And it comes from uh, a well-known astronomer, Johannes Havelius, who is um, who's the founder of lunar topography. He was also the mayor in da- of Gdańsk. Um, and w- what he did, he besides being uh, such a smart astronomer and the mayor, he had his own brewery. Ah. And that was exactly in the location that I grew up. So it was called uh, Jopen Beer in those days, in the, in the 1600s. And then after the war in 1945 it was renamed in a polish way pivna which is beer hmm. when you were a kid now what <laughs> first of all what... so i'm surrounded by beer lovers every oh, day yeah. because um you know it's the old part of uh, old town in gdansk many tourists come and see and drink polish beer which is which is a rivet Okochim, Varka, Tiske, Lech. There's many, uh, there's lots of really good beer. When you, now, are you living stateside now or do you live over there still? I am, you know, my mom is still there on Pivna Street, so we still have uh, our place there. And I'm here in Los Angeles where I have my family and son who is, um, who grew up with Polish food every day, mm. including his uh, every morning instead of, you know, cereal, he eats zupa mleczna, which is milk soup. And that is milk with pasta. And you sprinkle it with either sugar or honey or any sweetener. Oh, my gosh. Hang on. Did you just say milk with pasta? Yes. It's amazing. I pray my kids are not listening because that would be that they would be all over that pasta and milk. Was it pasta that is so thin, like 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 those like threads? They're very thin. It's we call it nitki pasta, nitki, which is from from a thread, very thin. But it's so great. You can have it not only with regular pasta. You can have it with lana kluski milk soup, which is um, like uh, egg drop noodles, like yeah. you know runny dough egg batter noodles. So you can have it with. You can also have milk soup with. Rice. So, um, 
It's kind of a close to rice pudding, I, I, I would say, but it's so wonderful. He, he could eat it every day. Kids love pasta, and you imagine that with milk, sure warm did. milk. You know, we had, my mother used to make dumplings, but they were egg dumplings. And I remember we had egg noodles all the time, uh, frequently, but we never had, we never had pasta. Um, uh, it was always a kind of an egg product, you know, egg noodles or these uh, dumplings that she'd make out of kind of flour and egg and then just drop them into boiling hot water and they would form these um, kind of, you know, lo- well, not lumpy. They were delicious in chicken soup, but they were <laughs> little, they were dumplings that were made that way, but it was all egg. Um, so it's interesting to you to, to hear about pasta there. Um, ah, never too late, Jane. Try it. Yes. You know what? Also, my mother's mother, uh, the Shelongs, uh, she yes. then became Grigorsky. They were from Gdansk. My grandmothers, they, they moved to America in 1897. 1897- 1899, and my mm. grandmother was born in, she was the only one born in America um, as they left. She and her, Veronica, Simon, and her brothers left Gdansk and came to Milwaukee uh, before she was born in 1899. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That? Which we always we said was why she liked fish so much. We think that maybe because the, the, the Gdansk is on the, on the Baltic. That, That's correct. Um, it is know, a city get she was always a great, and there's many wonderful um, rivers and uh, very well-known lakes. Many people from other countries especially come to northern Poland just to, you know, fish for uh, fish like pike and eel, perch, beam, roach, and, and it's so many wonderful fish. And that was, that, that's kind of what was our survival food in those yeah. days, too. Well, i tell you what, let's grab a couple of calls here. It is a Food Friday, and we are joined today by Bayada Pozniak and Jane Kaczmarek. 800-348-2551 is our telephone number. We'll start it out with Paula in Cohoes. Hello, Paula. Hello, everybody. Um, Hi. My, I'm actually a Polish. I'm Polish on both sides of my family. I'm, yeah. I'm from Buffalo, New York. Ah. My maiden name is Blizniak in English, but Bliziak in Polish. So I understand it means twin. I don't speak the language. Yeah, please, yeah, I grew correct. up with. <laughs> yes, I did grow up with Chadnina, <laughs> and although I've never made it, and <laughs> I, I don't understand why everybody is so queasy because meat has a blood in it, and people eat meat, mm. but they are. So how would you make it? Can you make it today? How would you long, go about and what as are long you? as you get that blood, as I was telling the story earlier for the lady who bought the duck, but the blood had been you had to buy the blood separately. Right. Um, you okay. know, I'm sure Pol- I would assume Polish grocer grocery gro- grocery stores would have something like that. Yeah. I don't because you're near from, from the Euro Deli, I should ask them. Is Chiktawaga a very big Polish community near Buffalo? Yes, it's right outside. I actually yeah. was on the east side, which was where it was before everybody moved to Chippewaka. <laughs> yeah, I so. would. I would look around in your grocery stores there because I'm sure you could find it. Okay. I'm not sure, but I would assume. Well, I don't live in no. No, she's in Cahos over here next to all. I live in Cahos oh. now. Oh, 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 so, oh I'm sorry. But I was. I bet you could find. So it's something. just interesting. Yeah, I Go bet online. it's you know. Yeah, well, that's I had true. a friend that's who, an out of work yeah. actress, who had won a Tony Award, and I saw her she, as a child. I saw her a year later, and I said, her name was Daisy Egan, and I said, oh, my God, Daisy, what do you do? What are you up to? She said, I'm selling breast milk online. No, oh, there you go. Yeah. Which is kind of the, the yeah. journey of actors. <laughs> this business has got its ups and downs. You know, if you but think about it. I was surprised you, you could buy breast milk online. Maybe you can make the Polish yeah. milk soup with that, right? <laughs> well, you can maybe buy the blood online. Yeah, there you go. Well, thank you very much, so, Paula. Uh, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Appreciate Bye. the call. 800-348-2551 is our telephone number. Beata, you went mushroom picking a lot as kids? Oh, Yes. Uh, gosh, that was so big in, in our family. Um, my grandmother and my great-grandmother, um, they, it, that was so big. So basically, uh, you would have to get up four or five o'clock in the morning, and that is just only because you want to be first, so nobody gets there you know, before you, so you can get the best mushrooms. And especially after it rains, that is the best uh, time to go um, and pick mushrooms. And we would pick um, uh, chanterelles, the oh, yeah. kurki, uh, saffron milk caps, um, porcini, uh, parasol mushrooms, uh, something called mashlaki, 
and uh, it was just so it smelled so beautiful. You know, I don't know how to explain to to everybody, but you know, the smell of the forest and and those mushrooms are unforgettable. And when we would bring the whole basket, so many baskets home, uh, of course, y- y- we would make either uh, the soup or crepes, or if we had uh, a lot of them, we would dry them uh, for the times that there will be no, there won't be a mushroom season, of, of course. So what we would do, I remember that as a kid, my mom would give me a needle and a thread, and I would have to, after cleaning them, you cannot soak them. You just have to brush off the, the dust. Yeah. You have to put a needle. And just like you'd, you'd make almost like I remember as a girl, I would make first like a necklace. And I have such a nice memories of drying <laughs> mushrooms. And you would hang them in the window where sun is and make sure there is a little draft. And just these kind of little memories as a child was so precious for me. And then, of course, making soups and, and all the delicious uh, food because my mom wanted to make sure that, you know, I would have um, meals that would be high in fiber and protein and vitamin D and B12 and all that, all those good nutrients. So mushrooms are very big in our family. Yeah, and they're they're big, a big Polish staple too. I mean, it's kind of like the cucumber. I think there are many, many recipes and things that have lots of mushrooms. Jane Kaczmarek, yeah. before we get and to our next remember call. my mom's favorite um, uh, mushroom was something called kurki and it's funny because kurka kura is from chicken but it's a really orange like a golden chantal oh, we call that right? hen of the hen of the hen of the woods here yeah, yeah and it's and i remember she, the way she would make it is with cream mm-hmm. and mm. <laughs> everything has to be cream and oh yeah can't go wrong. Yeah, cream, very thick cream, and it's just beyond delicious. Those memories uh, will yeah. stay forever. Jane, before we get to our next call, please just give us the quick rundown of your very famous Polish cucumber salad. Well, I have to put that back on my mother, of course, uh, Evelyn Grigorski Kazmarek, and her mother, um, Frances Shelong Grigorski, as I mentioned earlier. The trick to the cucumber salad is you want to cut those things as thinly as, you, as possible. I lay them out. At, I've been using those uh, Persian cucumbers, you know, the, the smaller ones. Yeah. Um, and you, I cut them. I first uh, peel them, but not completely. You want to have them a little, you know, hearty. I, um, so kind of half peel them. Cut them as thinly as possible, put them on a cookie sheet or something, and then I salt the bejesus out of these things. <laughs> I really, 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 really hit them with salt and turn them over. And after not too long, you can see them weeping. They release all their moisture. And you want to mm. do this because it makes the cucumber slice even thinner. It's like a it's like a wafer. It's like a floppy, floppy wafer. And then I take a, a kitchen towel. Uh, like a linen towel, and I just squeeze them and pick, get a, all that moisture out of them. Then I run them through a cal- colander to because they sometimes can get too salty, but rinsing them with water will take care of that because you want them to, make, to, to hold that salt flavor in them. Um, and then you put in some vinegar. I have tried fancy vinegars. The best vinegar is just apple cider, cider vinegar that everybody has, uh, cider vinegar and some sugar. And um, and as much dill, fresh dill, as you can chop up on top of them. And I marinate in them in that for, for as long as, as long a time you have. Then I drain it out so they're, they've maintained that flavor, but they're not, so, they're not sitting in the liquid, and put sour cream in. And sour cream is just the most heavenly uh, addition to that uh, salty, vinegary, dilly, delightful thing. And then a little bit of the, the uh, vinegar back in that I've saved um, if, you, if you want a little bit more of that. But I tell you, I loved these as a kid. My children, uh, this is like one of the only things they beg for me to make, my son George. And I did dozens of cucumbers, and they were gone, you know. They were just gone at one, of, one dinner. Oh, he God. just... No, they're perfect. They're light and refreshing and um, just easy and delicious. All right. That sounds so good. Next year when you come it's in called person. called Miseria, and it's from a word, misery, who, which is attributed to the Queen Bona Sforza, this, uh, an Italian uh, princess who married the Polish king. 
that was in the 16th century and she was homesick for her native Italy and where cucumbers were so common. So every time she ate these, this Polish combination that you described, Jane, yeah. it reminded her of Italy and made her cry. So it's named Misery, Miseria. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's nice. All right, let's you know, that's fascinating, the cross-cultural thing of it, too, isn't it? I mean, that's remarkable. <laughs> let's, let's take a quick break here. Our number is 800-348-2551, and I promise you folks hanging on the line, we will get to those calls in a moment. Jane Kazmarek is here, and Bayata Pozniak. It's Food Friday, and we'll be right back. one 800 is the number. It's Food Friday. Ray Graff here, and we are joined today by Jane Kazmarek, and the Blood Queen is also with us, Bayana Pochniak. <laughs> you know, um, all those folks who usually go to the Polish Fest around here, just let it be known that it's virtual this year. You know, so many people and so many organizations have had to change the way they do things. This is, I believe, a first of its kind. It is a virtual Polish fest. You can find out more, polishfest-ny.org. There's a full schedule there. Well, we're having a good time talking about Polish food and words I can't pronounce. Let's go to the lines. Greg in upstate New York. Greg, you're on. Yeah, hi. I'm, I'm on speaker. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, generally yeah. We, we like uh, handsets, but you're all right there. Go oh, ahead. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, that, that's better. I'm on the regular phone. Hey, uh, this is a real honor and a real kick to uh, hear all you guys. And all this stuff sounds familiar. My grandparents came uh, over in the early 1900s into New York and then into Bayonne, New Jersey, but they tried to live all the old uh, old ways. And on their passport, it said their country of origin was, was from Russia. And then in 36, when they became citizens, it said they're country of origin was Poland. So now it's called Belarus. But I, um, mm-hmm. I go to all these uh, Polish things and polka dances, and, and the customs are so similar. I, I don't know whether I'm mm-hmm. Polish or Russian at this point. But, uh, you know, all the things are similar. But I, they talk about sledge, and I, I didn't know what that was. And what is sledge? Okay, sledge is a herring. Sledge, sledge. Oh. So one is sledge, and sledge are herrings. Hmm. Okay, so you make them in cream, or uh, is that what it is? Yes, you can make them in cream. They can be in tomato sauce. They can be in vinegar, uh, in sour cream. There's many ways of making authentic schledge. <laughs> I remember many- eating it, again, being Catholic, you know, if there was never meat on Fridays. Right. And I remember my mother ricing potatoes. I, was, I also said, we, I, don't, I do not remember a single dinner growing up where we didn't have potatoes. <laughs> Every they were rice, they were baked, they were, but she would rice potatoes and brown little bits of onion and parsley and pour that all over the herring and the rice potatoes. And it, we would use the herring, uh, Ma Bench's was the great brand in Milwaukee, Ma Bench's herring, and it would, we'd use herring and, um, in vinegar, not the cream sauce for that. But with rice potatoes and onions and butter, uh, they're delicious. That sounds great. Greg, thanks for the call. I take it, Jane, you've peeled a lot of potatoes in your time. You know, it became like falling off a log. I think the way people now wake up and the first thing they do is look at their phone. I knew there was like a bell that went off my head, my my brothers and sister and I, and mostly my sister and I and my mom, that it was time to start peeling potatoes. They were in a bin under the sink, and, you know, you just started peeling potatoes. <laughs> do you have the same similar experience, uh, Bayana? Well, it's so interesting that you mentioned uh, potatoes. I I just read, um, I happen to have the pleasure and the honor to read a wonderful um, history. Uh, actually, it was for Random House, an audiobook, a 19-hour audiobook, The History of Catherine the Great. And there, uh, I learned that actually Catherine the Great of the Russian Empire, she According to the book, she was the first one to cultivate potatoes. Huh. Wow. And that is, that is how we, you know, it came to our region as well uh, in the 1800s. Were they so already in Ireland, Ireland, I wonder? Oh, they must have been. I mean, Ireland. where we got them from, you know? Yeah. That's incredible, though. 
Well, my mother, we, you know that game you play where if you could have only one food on a desert island, what would it be? But my mother's answer was potatoes. Yeah, yeah. You could do a lot with them. That's for they are full, sure. They are filling. And, uh, you know, I was just actually, uh, not just, I mean, uh, last year I was in uh, Peru, and uh, and they have, if I understood correctly, nearly like 3,000 uh, types of potatoes. And uh, hmm. I, I just don't know how it's possible. This, and they're all nutritious, and uh, they're very different. I, I did not know there's this so many types. I didn't either. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So potatoes are very uh, dense with nutrients, which is um, probably that's why your family knew subconsciously this is the way I, to survive. You know, and I think that that uh, group of people, too, it was the idea of meat and potatoes, and it wasn't a euphemism. It was really meat and potatoes, yeah. <laughs> except yeah. Fridays when you would be fish. <laughs> Let's yeah. go to Mike mm -hmm. in New Windsor. Mike, you're on. Hey, actually, Marsh. Come on. Yeah, Marsh. <laughs> Das Vidanya. <laughs> no, I grew up. Uh, my my hey, mother's. Das Vidanya, that's family. Russian. I got very important Russian. No, uh, Dovizenia. Dovizenia is Polish. And Das Vidanya. Yeah, my grandmother and my grandfather on the Polish side, the Slavic side, really Slavic. Do you ever hear of a Skoda car company? S K O T A. Oh yes, right. Skoda. That's Skoda. a car. Yes, Skoda. Yeah. That's my grand. That was my grandmother's sister's company. Oh, so, oh my god! Anyway, yeah, but but so when we used to say piva for beer. Piva? piva is beer. That's right. Right, and then for pigs, we used to make something. Pig was sfino. Sfina, that's correct. And very good. We used to make, uh, you remember very well. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, mio ricordo. In Italian, I could tell you more in Italian because it was. More spoke around and Slavic language was the stuff that I remember. A lot of it was not good. Used to, you know, what dog was pets? All right. P.S. How did you say dog? P.S. Uh, oh. How about Kuchka for cat? Uh, cot. And if you love your cot very much, you say kotek or kotush. Hmm. Yeah, we say Kuchka. So, but we used to make a dish with pig's feet. And it was not gelled, but we used to boil it with with a bunch of herbs and stuff, and then it would get it, draw the fat out of it, and we let it sit upstairs, and then we used to take the gel off it and eat the pig's feet, and there was a name for it. I can't find it. I, I, any of you guys ever do anything like that? No, I don't know that one. Yeah, you stumped the yeah, band. I mean, I've asked around, but we we did that, and then another thing that my father's sister, the Slavic side. They used to make a roll. It was like a rotini, but it was bakery and with poppy seeds and a oh. really flaky dough. Oh, poppy seeds are one of my favorite things. That is such a uh, right. popular Polish uh, addition, maybe for many cultures too, but I just loved poppy seeds and things. Hmm. And I don't yeah, know what that I, would be. Just um, well, we're You know, may, about, there's uh, something uh, called kopitka. And kopitka are named after hooves, and this is a type of dumpling. Hmm. Okay. No, I don't that, remember. That I don't I could, remember. Um, you know. Yeah. But in desserts, uh, in desserts, uh, poppy, sweetened poppy seeds in desserts is just delicious. Yes. I mean, uh, poppy seeds, they would make a, a cake um, right. called makovets. Mm -hmm. Mac, poppies, uh, poppy seeds. So what's beautiful about Poland, uh, sometimes when you, you know, drive through the country and you see the fields full of red poppies, it's so beautiful. And, um, and yeah, you just um, can make poppy seed cake. That's the most popular, probably, uh, dessert. Mm. Well, Mike, thank you for the call. We're Thanks, joined Mike. To, we're joined today by Jane Kazmarek and Bayada Pozniak. And let's go over to line four in Kingston, New York. It's Andrew. Andrew, you're up. Oh, hi. Hello, I'm Andrew. Here about kick sets. Hi, Jane. Wow. Uh, I'm starstruck. But <laughs> let me just say, I want to hear about kick sets. Kishka? Uh, Alan, Jar Alan Zartok is always talking about getting kicked in the kishka. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I don't, I, I, I'm thinking of kishka, of course, which is the blood oh, and barley sausage we were talking about earlier. I think that might be kind oh, of a Yiddish sausage? dish. Yeah. Well, what is the name of it? Oh, okay. <laughs> kishka, you, you were going to 
The lady who was on earlier, you were going to, she was going to describe how the kishka was made. Kishka. Dr. Shartok will say, I got kicked in the kishkas. Yes, yes, he um, does. Uh, but that's actually a very interesting. Yeah, so be kishka, yeah, kicked in the intestines. Yeah, I don't know. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, kishka is often made uh, from. I mean, you have to pack them in in uh, clean hog intestines. Mm. Yeah, kishka because it, it the skin is black. It's thick, and yeah. when you brown it, it's ready when that black skin just bursts. And then you get lots of the inside of the sausage that pour, they become nice browned like bits. Mm. Um, it's delicious, Kishka. You know, Jane. But what I uh, remember, one of the recipes um, includes buckwheat groats or barley. And that yeah. also, once you cook it, changes the color of the Kishka. That's interesting. And we had a dog named Kasha, which. Uh, along with being a kind of food, also means Catherine or Kate, doesn't it, in Polish? Kasia. Kasia. Yeah. Kasia yeah. is a female name, but Kasia uh, is a grain. Yes, yes. But it's kind our... of a, like a cereal or porridge mm-hmm. may, that is uh, part of the buckwheat mm-hmm. food family. Mm-hmm. You know, it occurs to me that both of you are you're in showbiz. You're on the West Coast. Do all the showbiz types go for this stuff? Well, you, Jane, do you have people over and say, you know, hey, we're making the kishkas today? Well, you know, I for very long had a Paderewski salon. Um, there were quite a few uh, Polish professors and uh, incredible pianists at the Thornton School of Music at USC. And um, we... Uh, we started um, a Paderewski salon where we would bring in um, uh, pianists, people who were had uh, participated in the Paderewski festival. Paderewski was a, is a great musician, and he was also the first prime minister of Poland in 1918 after World War I, when Poland became a sovereign nation again. For 200 years before that, it had been part of Germany or Russia back and forth. But at the end of World War I, uh, Poland became uh, Poland again, and Paderewski was the, the first prime minister. And as I said, also this brilliant pianist and musician. So I would have these salons in my house. Uh, Pasadena has a lot of music lovers, and the Pasadena Conservatory of Music would join with me, and we'd move the furniture and set up chairs in my living room and <laughs> listen to music. And I would ship my favorite Polish sausage in from Milwaukee, which is Clement's Fresh Polish. People get so used to smoked, they think kielbasa is smoked Polish, but fresh Polish sausage is just a a horse of a different color. I'm with Um, you there. I am totally, let's grab one or two more calls here. We're almost done with the program. It has gone very quickly. Ben in Greenville. Ben, you're on. Uh, Hey, guys. How you doing? Hello. 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 I um, I just wanted to, like, sort of ask a question. Um, I have Polish heritage in, in my, you know, my family, and we have this uh, food tradition at Easter time that I've been told is Polish. And uh, uh, first, is a there's a bread called paska, and it's like a you know, large loaf. I always call it the Polish Irish soda bread because it's sort of a, a dense raisin bread loaf. Uh huh. Is it braided on so top or that. not? No, no, no. It's not like babka where it's braided. Um, and then uh, there's a, there's another dish called sedek. Sedek. And it's sort of yeah. It's sort of like a ball of egg. It's a, it's it's made by taking a, a, you know two dozen scrambled eggs and a half a gallon of milk and putting it all in a pot and cooking it very very slowly until all the proteins in nature and it clumps up. Oh. And then you strain it through a you strain it through a, a, a cheesecloth. Mm-hmm. And you're left with this sort of ball of egg and then it's it's eaten cold. You take slices off of it. Oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. Bayana, you grew up over there. Is. Are you familiar with this? Well, you know, serek in Polish, that is cheese. I'm wondering if they add pieces of cheese since it's part of the Polish co- culture. Uh, and paska um, is really another word for bread uh, oh. during Easter. That's what comes to mind. Okay. Well, Ben, thanks a lot for the call. Thank we you, Ben. Appreciate it. 
Yeah. The uh, number is 800-348-2551. Only a couple of minutes left here. We go to Rich in Boston Spa. Hello, Rich. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the show, and uh, I call because I, I have the name of the the dish that a gentleman called earlier about. He uh, was talking about pig's feet in a gel or pig's yes. feet in aspic, I guess you might call it. It's called galaretta. That's G-A-L-A-R-T-A. right. Now I know. It's Jimne Nuski. So Jimne, it means cold, and it's, uh, that's right, it's Polish jellied pig's feet. So Jimne Nogi or Jimne Nuski. Jimne in Polish means cold and Nogi, uh, feet. Yeah. Uh, my, my, mother would make it, <laughs> my mother would make it, she'd put it, it was basically in a loaf pan, and then uh, after it's set and it's cold, you'd cut it up, and we would eat it uh, sprinkled with vinegar and with rye bread. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes, and or horse one radish one or thing. lemon. That is correct. Yeah, and and, uh, one, and one would one could add some uh, onions or celery or um, peas, sweet peas. And it it was uh, one of the delicacies um, during holidays, especially. Wow. Well, I hope that other fellow is still listening and hears that that you uh, that you remember the recipe. Rich. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, we ladies, we're out of time here. Jane, oh. what do you have coming up? Anything good? Ah, uh, I have uh, coming up, uh, continuing what I have been doing, which is loving this quarantine. I mean, I, I God forbid, the horrors it's wreaking on the. Uh, on the world. Um, but I have been, um, a full-time mom and am just loving cooking. I have never cooked so much. Ah. Uh, I had a couple projects, which of course are waylaid for, uh, when we're all back on our feet and people are back in the theaters. Right. I usually go to Williamstown theater festival for the summer, but, um, there, everything is closed. This is just a, Strange. um, for everyone, a, a, a very unusual time in the performing arts. It's, it's very, I mean, um, um, dire because people have to get so close to each other in order to act. And audiences in theater anyway, well, even in movies, nobody wants to go and sit in a, a movie theater or a theater where you're so close yeah. to each other. So yeah. um, we're reinventing ourselves. Well, we have to uh, cut it off there. And I really appreciate Jane Kazmarek for being here and Bayada Pozniak. Both of you did a great job. And uh, I hope you have fun with the virtual Polish Fest. And you can find out more about that at polishfest-ny.org. Support comes from Big Y, family-owned and operated market with locations throughout the Berkshires, celebrating more than 80 years of serving communities throughout New England, bigy.com. Honest Weight Food Co-op, open to all 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily and now offering early bird hours, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday for high-risk shoppers, Albany's homegrown grocery store, honestweight.com. At Delmar Farmer's Market, the 2020 season now open every Saturday from 9 to 1 at the Elmav Park in Delmar, delmarmarket.org for information. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday at 2 for a Medical Monday.